So you found what looks like the perfect formulation. It is exactly what you have been looking for, but you don't have the emulsifying wax it calls for. Now what? The emulsifier is a key part of an emulsion. It's what brings the oil and water together and actually makes the emulsion, after all. But is the specific emulsifier that important? Let's find out by comparing six of the most common emulsifying waxes to see which ones work, which ones are the easiest and trickiest to work with, and of course, which one makes the best emulsion. I'm going to use my Easy Emulsified Body Butter as the basic formulation. It uses Emulsifying Wax NF as the emulsifier, and I got lots of questions about using different emulsifying waxes on that formulation, so it seemed like a great candidate for this experiment. Today we'll be testing two natural emulsifying waxes, Redemuls SCG and Olive M1000, two cationic ones, BTMS 25 and BTMS 50, and I've pre-ground both of these so that they melt faster, and two not natural ones that are slightly less common but still awesome, glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate, and cetyryl alcohol and cetyryl 20, which is also known as emulsifying wax soft and silky. If you want to learn more about any of these emulsifiers, I have done deep dive videos on all of them except the last one, so check out my deep dives playlist. With the emulsifiers gathered, let's get started. I'll be making a 100 gram batch of my easy emulsified body butter with each of these emulsifiers, swapping the emulsifying wax NF out one for one. I'll begin by weighing out all the ingredients and using a wee bit of water soluble dye in each formulation so we can easily tell them apart. As I'm making, I am noticing that some of these emulsions are thickening a lot faster than others, making it harder to create a smooth final product that's not full of air bubbles. But more on that later. After a few hours of heating, blending, and stirring, we've got ourselves a rainbow of six creamy jars of emulsified goodness, plus the original formulation in white. First things first, they all worked, not a failed emulsion in sight, and that is a good start. So now we need to see how the different emulsifiers have impacted the feel and performance of each body butter. I'll begin by refamiliarizing myself with the original. Rich, creamy, lovely. And now on to the new body butters. Let's start at the top of the rainbow. This pink emulsion was made with glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate. This is the first emulsifier I ever used to create emulsified body butters because it's practically invisible in emulsions and it doesn't disappoint here. As I was blending, this one was slower to thicken than emulsifying wax NF, making it easier to create a smooth final product. The finished body butter is soft, creamy, silky, and gorgeous. I think it's a bit lighter and less waxy than the original too. Up next, this yellow body butter was emulsified with Redemuls SCG, one of the two natural emulsifiers in this experiment. I love this emulsifier for its silky, powdery skin feel. The body butter is soft, creamy, and really lovely. I think it also has an oh so slightly drier skin feel than the original, which is neat. It's a pretty subtle difference, but I'd say it's a positive one. Our next pot of goodness is the orange one, which was made with cetyryl alcohol and cetyryl 20, also known as emulsifying wax, soft and silky. I don't have a ton of experience with this emulsifier, but I'm often asked about it, so I knew I had to include it in this experiment. This emulsion was also slower to thicken, so it was easier to get a smooth product without lots of bubbles in it. The finished body butter is a bit more fluffy than the original formulation and feels a little less waxy, but it does soap a bit if you really rub it in. This teal emulsion uses Olive M1000, the second natural emulsifier in this experiment. This emulsion thickened quite quickly as I was blending it, making it tricky to get a uniform product. You'll notice this one has bigger air bubbles than the previous ones, and that's from trying to bust up the clumps that kept forming as it cools. This one does feel nice, very similar to the Emulsifying Wax NF version, but it really soaps without much encouragement. Now it's time for the first of the cationic emulsifiers. This blue body butter used BTMS 25, which contains 25% behentramonium methosulfate, which is the conditioning active. 
I love cationic emulsifiers for the amazing, luxurious skin feel they bring to our products. This version was definitely quite prone to clumping as it thickened, and the final product definitely has some larger air bubbles to prove it. I love how this body butter feels. Rich, smooth, and lastingly cushiony in a way only cationic emulsions can be. Delightful. And our last butter, the purple one, was made with BTMS 50, which is 50% bantermonium methyl sulfate, so twice the conditioning goodness as BTMS 25. The BTMSs can smell kind of fishy straight out of the bag, but I can't detect any sea-worldly whiffs from either BTMS body butter. I'd say the BTMS 51 moved at about the same pace as the original formulation, so it was relatively easy to keep it smooth without incorporating too much air. This one is satiny, glossy, rich, and indulgent. It has that same long-lasting, conditioned skin feel that the BTMS 25 one had, and I love it. So, which one is my favorite? That's a really tough call. I'd say the one with all of M1000 is my least favorite due to how much it soaps, which is something this emulsifier is just known for. I don't hate it, but it's not awesome. Both the Olive M1000 and the BTMS 25 ones were faster to thicken as they cooled, making them harder to work with than the original emulsifying wax NF version and the other emulsifiers that I tried in this experiment. I didn't love that. It's not a total deal breaker, but it means I wouldn't choose either of these emulsifiers for this type of formulation. In a thinner emulsion though, it really wouldn't be an issue. I'd say the BTMS 50 and Reademulse SCG versions both moved at the same speed as the original, and I think both have better skin feels. Which one you'll prefer out of the two will come down to how much you like conditioning cationicness in your skincare. I'm leaning towards the BTMS 50 version, but the Redomos SCG one is still gorgeous and definitely my top natural pick. I love how the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate and the cetyryl alcohol and cetyrith 20 versions were slower moving, so it made it a lot easier to get a smooth bubble lacking final product, but I do think that the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate one felt better and soaped less than the soft and silky one did. So, winners. I'm leaning towards BTMS 50 and glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate as a tie for first. I love the conditioning goodness of the BTMS 50 version, but I can't deny the slower thickening and the pillowy softness of the glycerol stearate and PEG 100 stearate version is also divine. What do you think? Here's the formulation. So which emulsifier are you going to use when you make it? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and happy making. Bye.